it's Emiko back with another video and this video is about if you should become a fursuit maker or make your own suit. At the end of this video I will tell you some tips and things you need to do before even considering to make a suit. Warning though, this video is honest and isn't fully positive as it mainly covers the cons. It is also a video correlated with another video why fursuits are expensive. This video isn't meant to offend but if it does, that's on you. These two videos are what I want everyone to know before they even consider making their first fursuit or continue making fursuits and before I make my fursuit tutorials. Anyway, let's get to it. So why would you want to make a suit? So you're in the furry fandom and you discover the fluffy and huggable fursuits that we all know and love and you probably want one for yourself. Nothing wrong with that. So you look online for makers and see that it's not exactly in your price range no matter where you go. So you decide to make one on your own as you find that it's cheaper. Also, nothing completely wrong with that. However, most furries will make their own suit due to the fact that it's cheaper than purchasing one. But making a suit or becoming a maker should be more than reason of money, whether to obtain or the lack of it. If you're thinking of being a maker, you should really ask yourself why you want to be a maker. Or if you are a maker, why are you making suits? Due to the factor of low cost, there seems to be a dramatic increase of makers within the years I've been in the furry fandom. And there are definitely pros and cons of that. The first thought is that we have a creative fandom with many makers to choose from, and that's a wonderful concept, but that doesn't seem to hold true. Yes, there are makers that are trying to climb the ladder of success, but there are those that become affected by the fandom in a way you didn't notice before, like the market of fursuits. See my other video for that. That creative factor and more to choose from that we talked about earlier, well, most of them are amateurs and are still learning how to work with the materials and how to sew in general. They're learning the basics, so we are left with more low quality suits. Competition is great and I often welcome it, and it seems like most makers are not working to improve or they just give up. The why or reason really matters for the community in many ways, and usually is a motive for makers to keep with what they love and, and what they're doing to improve. So here are things to know about the list of types of makers. Basically, it's a list from bad to good, which is just the ones with the most cons and the ones that affect the community in the negative ways to the more positive outlook. This video is to help makers identify what type of makers they are and discover if they are doing more harm than good. If this does discourage you, then you shouldn't be a maker. Most of these will have a common theme of did you research enough? For those who put little to no effort or research should not be making suits. I can't emphasize this enough. This already shows that you don't want to do all the work and to me, I'm already expecting a bad suit because of the lack of research. Honestly, you can tell which makers did their homework, did their research before making their suit because it's not awful. Granted, a fursuit isn't expected to look perfect, but making a suit with no knowledge is a waste of effort, money, and supplies. Especially because those supplies are increasing in price and may be limited to other makers. Fursuit supplies are precious. I myself spent hours on YouTube, Google, and forums to figure out how to make things in the kimono style. Now let's get on to the list of makers. First ones on the list are what I call trend makers. These are not really makers, at least I don't consider them makers, which is why they're the ones I consider to be the worst. Basically, as it sounds, these are people that want to make a suit all because it's a trend and looks fun. Sounds harmless, but they typically have had no prior interest in arts or crafts. There are followers and as such like the look and publicity makers get when they make a suit and want it for themselves. It's one thing to want to make a suit because you like to sew or a skill you want to improve upon. Do not use fursuit making as a first choice to build your skills. Start off smaller. With no prior experience or skills leading up to it, you're just wasting materials. It's harsh, but that's the truth. If this is you, do not make a fursuit with this as a reason. These are makers I loathe, even if you are a nice person. Granted, it's your choice I hate and not you specifically, but still. Doing this just because it's a trend is an insult to makers who make a living on making suits and have dedicated more time than you just looking up cute fursuits and you with no prior experience and no effort put into understanding, just decide to make one. Just like that. 
There are makers like me who have thought long and hard of deciding this is what they want to do and that this is a skill they want to improve on. The second one on the list I call profiteering. They're similar to trend makers, but they get a whole different category because their why behind it is different from trend makers. Similar, but different. I didn't know how else to call these type of makers, but they're usually the ones to hop on the bandwagon, similar to trend makers. They see how much suits cost and they want to get on the action, thinking it's easy money. The issues with this is that they are usually low cost, low quality suits. They have little to no experience. They're not really looking to improve and they're in it for the money only. That's where they differ from trend makers. They, in the end, take business away from some well-deserved makers. The third one on the list I call the base users. These makers are those that purchase head bases or some type of base where they mainly have to add fur. Granted, we all can't make resin bases and those are expensive and with good reason. Personally, I have mixed feelings as I can see why this might be needed and why I would never make a base, but here are the reasons. Now, bases are good for those that are great at furring and putting those extra details and sewing but they're not very good at sculpting. And I know we all have our strengths and weaknesses, so I'll give them that. But on the other hand, some people are lazy and will take credit for the base and will rarely state that they use a base. And really, it's someone else's suit that you finished. There's no personal style to it. It's really hard to call it your own when you only did the first suit and you didn't make the base for it. I personally wouldn't make a base because I wouldn't want someone to take credit for something that I did most of the work for, but like I said, I do see both sides to this one. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. The fourth type is one-time fursuit makers. I also call these the hobbyists, and as the name explains, these are makers that only plan to make one suit and is usually for themselves. Typically, it's just to save money, or as a hobby for them, or it's just for a project, and there's nothing wrong with that in itself. The issues with this, however, is that most do little to no research and use the excuse of it's my first suit. They often give up and waste materials and they usually make their suit as a temp and save up for another suit with no intention of keeping their original. What this means is that they don't really care what their first one looks like, it's just for a public display to show that they made a suit. To me, this doesn't make sense as you don't need a fursuit to be in the furry community and you could have used that money for the desired suit that you wanted. So why didn't you just go to a maker first? doesn't make sense to me. Obviously, it's all situational, and these are the bad ends to one-time fursuit makers. But I do have less respect for these type of makers for the listed reasons. The majority of these makers make their suits for the easy way out, when it's not easy. There is nothing easy about making a suit. That easy and cheap solution you thought of? Not easy, nor that cheap, and it ends up thrown away or never finished. I will admit, I started with the intention of being a hobby maker, but I had the intention of improving and keep making suits for my own purposes. I didn't practice sewing with fur though. I started by hand sewing clothes like cotton. I started with small things and worked my way to making fur suits. So it wasn't just on a whim. I took my time and if I didn't feel confident, I spent a while watching how-to tutorials and reading up on it. Fifth one on the list is career makers. Now these are ideal makers. This is because they started with the goal to improve and other ones that will take hours to days researching something they have not done before and will do their best not to make repeated mistakes. Because of this, their first attempts are usually better than most. Although everyone has a starting point and more than likely their suit won't be perfect, they are ideal because they want and care about quality. They want their suit to look good, even if it's their first. If I had any advice for makers, it would be to research, research, research. I can't emphasize that enough. Watch, read, test things out, and plan ahead. Before anyone asks me questions on how to make something, I really want you to research it before. And if you still haven't found your answer, go ahead and ask me on Twitter, Instagram. Just use the hashtag Chemifer q and &A. I don't want to discourage questions, but if it's a question I know is out there, I won't answer it. Put little hints that you did research, like using certain phrases, because that proves that you did your research. The next thing is the thing that you have all been waiting for, the maker checklist. So the thing about this before is you're going to need some basic skills, prior artistic knowledge. The first one is you need to have prior sewing knowledge. You need to start off with clothes or making 
thinking of plush, something small and something that doesn't require too many supplies. You're just starting out and you want to know the basic sewing. Blanket stitch and ladder stitch are the ones that you're gonna be mainly using whenever you're sewing a fursuit or even just making a plush. So have that basic prior sewing knowledge, even the prior sewing knowledge of using a sewing machine, that's very helpful. The second thing is be knowledgeable in these skills. So you're going to need to know how to sculpt or carve or have some sort of physical sculpting skill of anything, whether with foam, clay, even play-doh it's very helpful even carving because most of the time that's what you're doing you're just trimming off little things you also need to know how to use your basic craft materials like a glue gun scissors maybe even a turkey carver basically all those things you're just gonna have to research which things you're gonna need to know depending on what you're making those tools you need to know how to use the third thing is and this goes with the previous ones as well but you need to research a lot and I mean a lot even take notes before buying anything you need to research everything that you need you need to research how to do it don't just look up one thing having more references and information is better than having just one because if you just have one then there's going to be blind spots within that video or that forum or whatever with multiple things you cover those blind spots okay research 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 the fourth thing is you need to have a good motive and this goes with the types of maker list those are based off of the why or the motives and you need to know using this list what type of maker you are and what type of suit you're going to be making knowing that it helps drive you to making your suit. I would rather have a maker that wants to do what they're doing, is in love with the idea, and is dedicated to pull through no matter what. Because wasted materials make me sad, <laughs> okay? Do not waste materials. The fifth thing is plan out how you will make the suit using the research that you did. You just need to plan. Also plan the steps in which you're going to be doing it. So first thing making has more disadvantages than if you were to sell art. Usually before selling art, you have had time to finalize your style and take time before and you are comfortable enough to sell what you made. With fursuits, you don't have that luxury and mistakes are going to be costly. So researching and planning ahead is your best friend, okay? Although even in art, research is beneficial. My case in point. I have a dragon drawing that I did. Basically, I used charcoal and oil pastels. I did this in my high school art class. I had no experience with using oil pastels, but I watched about 10 to 15 videos of how to blend properly and how to use them, essentially. So research is your friend. It works, okay? Thank you all for watching. Even by this point, it means so much to me. Even a like, comment, or even a new subscriber, it means the world to me. I do read the comments and I like responding to the comments. They make me so happy, guys. Also, please watch the other video if you have not already, the why fursuits are so expensive as it correlates with this video and they will be posted at the same time. Uh, another shout out to my showcase video that I did before these two videos as by this point it's still for auction and the deal is done. Link in the description. Check out my Discord server as well and and join the Inari army. You don't have to be a patron to join, but patrons do get special access to certain channels and they get benefits. So patrons have special access to features in my video and early access. $20 patrons get detailed fursuit and drawing tutorials that are not posted to my YouTube, so they're exclusive. Links are in the description. I'm also trying to post videos more often. My goal is every other week. So see you guys next time. Bye.